The Huawei MatePad Paper is a very unique Android tablet because instead of an LCD, it has an e-ink display. That's why it's better suited for reading and is promising a much longer battery life. It's also cool that an active stylus is included and it should be particularly good for handwriting. Is it really and is all that worth it at a price of 500 euros? I'm NJ from MyNextTablet.com and that's what you will learn in this review. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm reviewing almost every tablet that gets released, including a little bit weirder ones like the Huawei MatePad Paper. The Huawei MatePad Paper looks a bit different than typical Android tablets and I think it more resembles a paper notebook or magazine. It has a 10.3 inch e-ink display that is surrounded by black screen bezels and on the left side we get a wider grip. We get a full plastic body which is surrounded by a kind of fake leather which makes it look and feel a bit higher end. I like that we get a fingerprint scanner that is integrated into the power button and works very well. There's also a standard USB-C 2.0 port and we get two speakers that are surprisingly good. Like really good, they are great for listening to music and audiobooks, there are no cameras. With 6.65mm, the matepad paper is quite slim, but more impressive is the weight of just 360 gram. Considering that this is a 10 inch device, those 360 gram are very very light and it is much easier to hold it in one hand for longer periods of time than an iPad Pro is for instance. The light weight is one reason why it's great for reading. Let's get to the 10.3 inch e-ink display of the MatePad paper. This is the unique selling point of this tablet. I'm sure you've seen e-ink displays on ebook readers like the Amazon Kindle series already. The MatePad paper has exactly the same count of screen. E-ink displays have a couple of advantages. They use much less energy because the screen needs to refresh when the content changes only. If you're reading a book and are staying on the same page, it does not use energy. It also does not need a background light. When you're working outside, in a bright cafe or in the sun, the display is very well readable and much easier on your eyes. And in case you want to read in the dark, there's a background light you can turn on. We get a pretty good e-ink display here. It's well readable and with 1872 by 1404 pixels, it's sharp enough. Viewing angles are very wide, just like with real paper and for reading, this screen is fantastic. I really enjoyed reading books on a 10 inch e-ink display, which is much bigger than your standard Amazon Kindle. So if you're looking for a tablet to read ebooks with and maybe to take handwritten notes with, this screen is ideal for that. But for everything else, it's not well suited. This is an Android tablet, so you can watch YouTube and Netflix with it, but it does not make sense at all. It works, but just doesn't make sense. The biggest downside of this e-ink display is not that it's a black and white screen, but it's super slow refresh rate and response time. The performance of the tablet itself is fine on paper, but in reality it never feels snappy because of the slow screen. When scrolling in the browser, writing with the on-screen keyboard or when going through the settings it always seems a bit laggy. This is not a surprise because it's just the nature of this kind of screen, but that doesn't change how it feels like. Yes, this is not a problem when reading an ebook or when writing with the stylus in the notes app, but it is a problem in Microsoft Office. I thought this might be a great tablet for writing with a dedicated keyboard width. And it is okay for that, but certainly not great. You have to make too many compromises. You can't use it as fast as you can a standard tablet or laptop because the screen reacts too slow. When wanting to delete a couple of words, for instance, you always have to wait a little bit to really see how much do you deleted already. And it also takes a while to see if you've misspelled something. Sure, it just takes about a second or even less, but it's still slower than an LCD. And when working fast, that's too slow. Now, all of that works and I did write a bit on the MatePad paper with a Bluetooth keyboard inside a cafe. It works, I wrote this review with it, but it's not ideal for that. And the same goes for the browser. Sure, you can read news and other websites with it and all of that works, but I never really enjoyed it because it just looks too laggy. 
I noticed a couple of other downsides, but these are not too much of a big deal for me. For instance, when scrolling in the browser, but also when writing in Microsoft Word, there's always a little bit of ghosting visible. With this, I mean that a soft image of what was seen before is lying underneath the new image. But somehow I did not feel it's too distracting and I can live with that. The Huawei M Pencil is included with the MatePad paper and this is an active stylus that is charged inductively by placing it on the side of the tablet. Unlike the Samsung S Pen and just like the Apple Pencil, this stylus has to be charged for it to work. And just like on the Apple Pencil, we get a hard plastic tip. It's comfortable to hold, similar to a standard pen. On the software side, the M Pencil is pretty well supported and we get a notes app that's prominently integrated into the UI and works great. I think this is a great tablet for handwriting notes. The screen feels more like paper and similar to a paper notebook, it's kind of more inviting to write on. I also like the experience. Hand palm rejection works perfectly and the pen is precise. It does have one downside, which is the slow screen again. Actually, in this case, the screen reacts surprisingly fast. It feels good to write with. But obviously, it does not react as fast as the 120Hz screens of the iPad Pro and Galaxy Tab S8. That's to be expected, of course, and is more of a downside if you like to draw fast. But for handwriting, it's okay. To see what normal people think of the experience, I gave the MatePad Paper and the iPad Pro to two friends to play around with just a little bit. And both friends liked the writing experience on the iPad Pro more. It might be because of the Apple sticker on the back, sometimes I'm not sure how much of an influence it is. But at the end, a colorful 120Hz screen does look cooler and has more options. The MatePad Paper is certainly not well suited for graphic designers. Inside the Huawei MatePad Paper runs the high silicon Kirin 820e processor, which is made by Huawei. We also get 4GB of RAM and a 64GB internal storage. There's no version with 5G or LTE at the moment. Even though the screen is too slow to show a fast performance, I ran my usual benchmarks anyways. In Geekbench 5, the CPU performance is on a similar level as the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, which is the cheaper Android tablet with S Pen. The compute graphics performance is even better and almost as good as on the Xiaomi Pad 5. In the 3D Mark Wildlife test, the graphics performance is quite a bit below the Xiaomi, but it's still much faster than entry-level Android tablets like the S6 Lite and Galaxy Tab A8. Now, even though the performance is good enough for some gaming, it does not make sense on this type of screen, not even a little bit. The only games that make sense are the ones with no or very simple and not fast moving graphics without any action. It's a great device to play chess and Sudoku with, for instance. The processing power should be fast enough for everything else according to benchmarks, but as I said earlier, that doesn't matter much because the response time of the screen is so slow. Besides that, yes, the performance is great for surfing the web in the browser, watching YouTube, using Microsoft Word and so on, all of that works fine. Out of the box, the Huawei MatePad Paper is running Harmony OS 2, which is Huawei's own version of Android that's based on Android 10. Because of the trade war between the US and China, the Google Play Store and all of Google services are missing and cannot be installed easily. So yes, it's Android, but it's Huawei's version of Android now. The interface is customized a lot, which makes sense for this type of tablet. Deeply integrated into the operating system are the Notes app, their own bookstore with a reader app, as well as a home screen and an app overview. Pre-installed are a browser, which is a good one, as well as a files app, an email app, as well as an audio recorder and WPS Office. Using the Huawei App Gallery, you can install a small selection of other apps that include Microsoft Office, but the App Gallery includes a handful of apps only and is not as big as for the other tablets. Well, this is still Android, so you can install pretty much every Android app once you download the APKs from the internet. You can search for them using the browser or you install a third-party app store. I installed the APK Pure app store, it's kind of an app store, and using that I installed lots of other apps like Netflix, Google Maps, Twitter, The Benchmarks, a chess game, and YouTube Advanced. I also installed the Amazon Kindle app and Audible because I prefer to get my ebooks from there and not from Huawei. Once you use something like the APK Pure Store, you can use almost all Android apps, with the exception of some Google services and there are probably a couple of more restrictions that I didn't find. However, basically, it then behaves like a standard Android tablet, except that it has an e-ink screen. 
Let's get to its battery life. Inside the MatePad Papers it's a battery with a capacity of 3625 mAh. That's very small compared to others. The Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite for instance features a 7040 mAh battery, so it's almost twice the size. So the smaller battery is the one reason for the light weight of the tablet. And because of this e-ink screen it does not need a big battery. When using it for reading books, writing some handwritten notes, as well as when reading in the browser a bit or writing a bit in Microsoft Office, you will have to charge it between every 2 and 4 days, depending on how heavy you use it of course. So it certainly won't last as long as a traditional ebook reader, but you will also be doing more than with the standard Kindle. Now the good battery life changes once you start using it like a normal Android tablet. If you play games, watch YouTube and surf the web a lot, the battery will drain much faster. I did run my standard battery test which is looping in HD YouTube video at maximum brightness inside the YouTube Advanced app. In this test the MatePad paper lasted just 5.5 hours, so much less compared to other Android tablets. It does not make sense to watch YouTube of course, but I wanted to run the test anyways. So is the Huawei MatePad paper something for you? Well, it's a fantastic tablet to read ebooks with and it's also good for handwritten notes. I enjoyed reading with it. I like e-ink displays much better for reading and it's nice to have a large 10.3 inch one. The design is nice and I love that it is so light. For everything else the tablet is not so good. Yes, it's fine to surf the web with a bit and you can sometimes get some work done in Microsoft Office, but I would not get it specifically for that. And like I said, you can download and use most Android apps if you really want to, but most work better on normal LCD screens. The MatePad paper is a great choice if you're willing to spend 500 euros on a 10 inch e-ink device to mostly read books with and maybe to use it as your diary for handwritten notes. But if you also want a tablet to surf the web with on a regular basis, to watch some YouTube, maybe play some games, then a normal tablet will be much better suited for you. I think some might really enjoy the MatePad paper. However, most are probably better off with the standard Apple iPad and the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite. Both together cost about as much as the MatePad paper. Alright, that's been my review of the Huawei MatePad paper. If you have any questions, write me down below. I'm NJ from MyNextTablet.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.